you always ask the question, which is, it's, it's not about the addiction, but why the pain? Yeah. Not why the addiction, but why the pain? And I think that is a central question that we can, if we just look outside in this world, we can see that that question is not being asked when it comes to thinking about either traditional quote unquote addictions for those listening. I'm putting that in quotes because there's so much more of a broad band of addictions, but even all the other things that we don't see as traditional addictions that truly are. Well, exactly. And, and you know, this is called the broken brain podcast. Well, then you get depressed because you've been pushing down your feelings or you compensate for your pain by getting addicted to, to heroin, or you compensate for your lack of value by becoming a workaholic, or you compensate for your sense of not being wanted by becoming a, a habitual s s sexaholic, you know? And then they tell you, there's something wrong with your brain. There's a brain disease going on. No, these are all compensations. And yes, they affect the brain, but it's not an illness that started in the brain. It's how your brain responded to life circumstances, to the pain of life. And the brain is actually shaped by life experience. So really it's people's experience we have to look at. Why the pain? And that's the question, not only in addiction, although it certainly applies there, but in so many human conditions. Even physical conditions. You know, we've had so many different experts in integrative and functional medicine and leading researchers in cancer. And now the new view on cancer is that cancer is not this thing that attacks the body, but it actually is a survival mechanism. Our healthy cells that are trying to survive a diseased, a diseased environment that they're being placed in. So really the idea that so much of we think of what is wrong with us, physical ailments, personality traits, compensations, addictions, are, as you said, survival mechanisms. It's action, reaction. When we understand that, we're left with the truth of now we can actually move forward. Well, let's see, what would I say about cancer? So lots of studies, I'm just writing a new book, so I just reviewed the vast literature on this. So um, women, who've got symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder have doubled the risk of ovarian cancer. Children who are abused in general have a higher risk of inflammatory diseases, autoimmune diseases, uh, and, and cancer. And um, I could go on and on and on and on. Um, the cancer, I wouldn't say directly is a survival mechanism, but it's a product of the body's response to, to, to lifelong stress and trauma. And, and uh, for example, we talk about people pleasing. And a lot of people who develop cancer have got this tendency to suppress their feelings. That suppression of feelings also suppresses the immune system. Because, it's, because the immune system is not separated from your emotional system. It's all one system. So then you get cancer because your immune, immunity has been diminished. Now, what does the cancer do? Well, the cancer threatens your life. It really does. I mean, physically, it really threatens your life. And of course, often it takes your life, which is true. But what's also true is that for a lot of people that I've talked with, the cancer functions as a wake-up call and says, boy, you have not been paying attention, have you? You've not been pay paying attention to your own needs. You've not been paying attention to who you really are. So in that certain sense, no, I don't recommend this way of learning. I don't recommend cancer to anybody. But once it shows up, I've known so many people who you, who, to whom it's been a teaching experience. In a, really, in a real sense, it was a cause of rebirth of their true selves. And this has been studied. I'm not just talking airy fairy stuff here. You know, I mean, this has been studied. And, and if you look at, there's a couple of books I could mention. In fact, you might want to have these people on your podcast. One of them is called Cured by Dr. Jeffrey Rediger, who's a physician and psychiatrist at Harvard. 
and cured is his book at, where they looked at people with so-called spontaneous remissions, people who, despite the failure of medical treatment or, or despite the fact that they refuse medical treatment and they're supposed to die, instead their cancer goes away. And, and, and medical, doesn't, medical science doesn't study these things very much. Like, it's interesting. I talk with these people who've survived like that, and the doctors never want to know, know what they did. But what they did is, in every case, transform their relationship to themselves. They became much more authentically themselves. And that made a difference to their malignancy. Now, I'm not talking about panaceas or cure-alls. I'm just saying that when the healing happens, it has to do with a deep connection to yourself that was cut off when you were small. The cancer woke you up and you reconnected to yourself. And I've seen this in autoimmune disease and multiple sclerosis, even, even in ALS, which is said to be universally terminal, but there are actually people who survived it and who've even recovered from it. You know, and in every case, it has to do with the transformation of the relationship to themselves. And Redegor is not the only one to have studied this. Other people have as well, and they published the same kind of findings. And in my own personal research, how people, how authentically people are able to be themselves instead of identifying with all those mechanisms that you identified in yourself, the people pleasing and all that. How they're just going to be themselves. That is a huge impact on their health and Illness, again, not that I recommend it, very often comes along and says, friend, wake up, wake up. The life you've been living is not your life.